Hey everybody, this is Jason here at Flex Machine Tools at our factory headquarters in Wapakoneta, Ohio. Here we're in our demo center. We're going to be running some parts on our Flex Jet and specifically looking at taper angle compensation today. So behind me here, I have our FLX 1365. This is a gantry style water jet with a 13 foot bridge and a six and a half foot depth. We also manufacture this system in a 13 by eight, as well as several other cantilever style water jets. If you're on our website and you're looking through our sizes and don't see something that you like or fits exactly what you need, give us a call. All of our designs are highly modular. We do custom sizes, design tweaks to really fit your need and tailor these systems to your application. So also today we're gonna to be using our iGEMS CNC controller, CAD CAM package, and then our taper angle compensation tilter head. Uh, we are going to be running some one inch thick aluminum utilizing a 50 horsepower pump and GMA classic 80 mesh abrasive. So first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about what water jet is and how it works and how it might differ from laser or plasma or other thermal type processes. Water jet cutting is an erosive process, so there's no heat affected zone, there's no heat involved, and it is a cold cutting process. We pressurize water, in this case up to 60,000 PSI. We accelerate it through a cutting head. We mix it with that GMA abrasive, and then that supersonic stream passes through a material and starts eroding it away. Since it is an erosive process, we have a range of feeds and speeds that we can work with. And in this case, this one inch aluminum, we might cut as fast as 10, 11, 12 inches a minute, and maybe as slow as two or two and a half inches a minute. Today, we're gonna to run through that full gamut of feeds and speeds to show you some differences. We're gonna cut in 2D conventional mode plus taper angle compensation mode. And we're gonna show you those differences on why and when you might wanna use each one of those. I um, kind of have two use cases that we're gonna talk about. One, uh, cutting the highest accuracy, best tolerance part that you can achieve using these tools. And the other one is trying to reduce the cycle time as much as possible in order to reduce that cost per inch and reduce that total part cost. So with that said, let's get started. So here's the part that we're gonna be cutting today. Nice little lifting eye or a lug or bushing out of one inch aluminum. You might be wanting to cut this part as accurately as possible to come right off the jet and into a production piece or using it as a roughing operation that you still want some square edges on to cut to a near net shape then to go into a machining center. So I'm gonna walk over to my iGEM CNC CAD CAM package here and walk through real quick on how we would program this part. So iGEMS is a full-blown CAD and CAM software suite that's specifically designed around water jet cutting. So there are CAD tools in here. This is uh, very familiar to any like AutoCAD or similar 2D CAD program that you might have used. There are also 3D tools in here if you want to make solids and lofts and geometries. Um, alternatively, if you have your own CAD package, we can import a wide array of file formats here directly into this environment. Uh, if you're designing in SolidWorks or Fusion 360 or any of the other well-known packages out there. So here's my geometry that I drew a little earlier. We're gonna go through and use our CAM tools to program this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is select my machine setup. So we're using an iGEM CNC controller. We're going to be running a 14 thousandths orifice with a 40 thousandths diameter nozzle and a 50 horsepower pump aluminum material at one inch. Selecting these are going to set my speeds and feed libraries in the background, so that's not something that you have to do as a user, as well as identifying you know, the range of speeds that I might be cutting this part in. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a part. So I'm gonna highlight my CAD geometry here and hit enter. And it's gonna color in and give me a preview of what that part might look like. Next, we want to path this part. So in our contour path, this is where we're going to set our lead-ins, our lead-outs. We have a bunch of control of offering you know, different types of piercing styles, linear piercing, circular dynamic piercing, air start piercing. You have an incredible amount of control here to fine tune um, tool paths and lead-ins on different types of materials. Today, I'm just going to start with the default. I'm gonna hit a multi-select and highlight this entire part. 
and it is going to auto path my interior contour and my outside contour. You'll notice that I have a phantom tool line on here that's already offsetting the width of my tool diameter. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is highlight this again and set my start point or my origin. So by default, I've chosen that at my lower left-hand corner here. So once you get a part you like, there's a bunch of different tools in here to modify that. So we can adjust cut qualities, you know, from extra rough all the way up to extra fine. We can reorder cut order. Um, you can pretty much do anything you want in this environment. So once we're happy with our cut order, our tool path, our origin position, we're going to go ahead and process this part. I'm going to select that guy there. And then we're going to post that to G-Code. So that'll run. Oops, let's do that again. And let's call this test part 12. We'll have a G-Code CNC file here that is human readable. We also have the ability to simulate this part. And then you know, get a visual simulation and check our tool pass to see if it's satisfactory and we like what's going on here. Okay. Also in this environment, we can kick out a report. So if we want to see how long this part is going to take or generate a job traveler for our shop floor. We can get a job report that's going to highlight materials, the tooling setups we used, rapid lengths, uh, speeds and feeds, total eclipse part time, and a little part preview there. Now, in this demo, we're going to be doing 2D and taper comp parts. And You'll see here when we post our part, by default we're going to be posting in a 2D conventional cutting method. If we want to use taper compensation or any of the other compensation tools, all we have to do is click these checkboxes and then repost our part and that part will post out with taper compensation capabilities. So that's a quick run through of programming. Let's take a look at what the actual cut parts look like. Um, we're going to talk about our first use case here, cutting the best quality, most accurate part that we possibly can out of the water jet. So here I've got two parts. Again, one inch aluminum cut on extra fine speed, which is around two and a half inches a minute, using a 50 horsepower pump, and one was cut conventional, and the other one was cut with taper compensation. So all the parts are going to measure similarly at the top of the part. The proof of the pudding and the dimension that we want to pay attention to is what is that dimension on the bottom of the cut. And that's going to tell us the story on what the difference between 2D and taper angle compensation is. So I've got my part labeled number two right here. If I measure my top, I am going to be at around 501 uh, or 1.5 inches, 1.501. And if I flip that over to the bottom, I'm going to be measuring at around 1.51, 1.509. So conventionally cut at a very slow speed, uh, I'm going to get an excellent surface finish, maybe around 125 RMS, and about 5 thou of run out or taper per side, meaning the part is going to measure 10 thou heavy on the bottom. That part ran in about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Now running that exact same part again, but with taper angle compensation, selected. Again, at the top, I'm going to measure about 1.15, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. and if I flip that over to the bottom of the part, again, I'm going to be bang on right about 1. 1.5, 1. 1.501. So no added time, same surface finish, is able to taper compensation out 5 thousandths per side on the part measuring a very high quality, very accurate, very square part. So next we're going to talk about taking that part that we just cut and seeing if we can speed it up a little bit. So our first part, which was cut on extra fine, around 2.5, 3 inches per minute. We're going to repeat that same experiment and cut on a medium cut quality, both with a 2D and a taper comp part, and bump that feed rate up to around 6, 6.5 inches per minute. And let's take a look at our number three part here, 
which is our medium cut quality, cut conventionally. Again, I'm gonna measure around 1.50, 1.501 on the top. And if I flip that over, I'm gonna measure around 1.52 or 1.519 on the bottom. So you'll notice that grew a little bit. Since we're cutting faster, we're not, in, we're not allowing the jet as much time to erode away that bottom of the cut. So the bottom of our part grows and we lose a little bit of that tolerance. And if we take a machine at square, we'll notice a little bit of daylight underneath there as that taper grows and grows. So if we take that same medium quality part and now apply taper compensation, and we're gonna measure our 1.50 on the top and flipping that over on the bottom, we're gonna hit 1.50, 1.501 it looks like. So we gave up just a little bit of surface quality, not much, still perfectly uh, acceptable, beautiful finished part. We took our cycle time from three minutes and 30 seconds with our extra fine, and we've moved it down to two minutes and 22 seconds with a medium cut quality. Still amazing surface finish, still square taper-free edges. Let's see if we can do one better though. All right, so for our last part here, um, we're just gonna push the cut speed higher and higher. So we're gonna run this on our rough finish. And we're gonna move all the way up to around 10 and a half inches per minute. Now we are definitely going to give up more surface finish here. Um, this is not what I would consider a finished part off the mill. This would be a great application if this part was then moving into a second operation, say on a machining center, where they're gonna take a cleanup pass, maybe drill and tap some holes, but you want to blank out this part and remove stock as quick as possible to move it from operation one on the water jet to operation two downstream. So we don't really care what the part looks like. We just want nice square edges. So our machinist is happy when he clamps us in his vise and he has something nice and square to indicate onto. So with our rough finish here, we'll look at our top and not surprising, we're getting around one and a half inches, maybe one and a half, one. And if we flip it over to the bottom, we are hitting pretty much that same number. So the nice thing here is we've reduced our cycle time all the way down to one minute and 57 seconds. And we could keep playing this on and on. I mean, we could push this speed rate up to 11, 12, 13, maybe even 14 inches a minute and try and get this part under you know, one and a half minutes for the total part cycle time to then move on to our machining center. But the point remains, you know, with the taper angle compensation head, we are clearly able to maintain part accuracy and square edges, reduce that cycle time, maybe at the expense of a little bit of surface finish, and reduce that total part cost as it moves through manufacturing. So thanks for spending a little time with us today as we kind of work through some taper angle compensation applications. Hopefully it gave you a good idea of one, what these machine tools are capable of, but two, how they can apply to some of the things that you might come across in your business. Um, here at Flex Machine Tools, we've been in business since 1971. A lot of us, a lot of you know us for our flexible tapping arms that we started making in 1984. And we've been in the CNC game since about 2017. Um, we're a veteran-owned business. We're here located in the heart of the Rust Belt, just a stone's throw from Detroit and other great U.S. manufacturers. We have a full in-house engineering team that we pull from local talent, um, the Ohio State University, UNOH, Ohio Northern, Miami University. And we've got a good mix when you come in here of young and older, more experienced talent that, uh, you know, the culture will just really shine through and it's a great place to be. So I encourage you to reach out to us. Come here, uh, book a demo, book a visit. You'll see the machines that we build are heavy, overbuilt, large, uh, robust machines that are really designed to last for 10, 20 years and beyond. There's a lot of high quality components. The jet itself here is manufactured 100% in the United States and uh, it's something that we're all really proud of. So if you like this, please hit the like and subscribe button below and keep up to date on what we're doing or go to our website. We've got inquiry forms, there's a chat box or just give us a call. You can reach our sales and application team at 419-649-7703. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us today.